looking forward to seeing your dad? This is Giseni Prison in the north of Rwanda. It was specially set up for genocide perpetrators. Cabez is part of Rwanda's national football team and he has just returned from Mexico where they competed at the 2011 Under-17 World Cup. He is visiting his father for the first time in six months. It is an encounter that shows the legacy of Rwanda's recent history. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in Kigali, capital of Rwanda, and when you hear the name Rwanda, the first thing that springs to mind is hell on earth, the genocide. But that was 17 years ago. Today, I'm here for a completely different reason, football. Football fever has gripped this nation, seated right here are some youngsters who are waiting for their own turn to train on the beach. And right there, we can see some adults who are already training. Soon, I will be meeting the Under-17 team who have qualified for the Under-17 World Cup in Mexico. That is a huge achievement, and I want to find out what this represents for this country. People know that when you say Rwanda, they, they started looking about genocide, but we want to show that another new face. There is a peace, we can play football, we can do many activities. We want to change the past. Right now, we are looking about the future. These young footballers are clearly very good ambassadors to promote a new positive image of Rwanda. I want to find out what prompted this level of optimism. It is very personal to me because I come from Sierra Leone and started my career filming our own civil war. I know from my own experience how the terror of indiscriminate violence destroys a nation. Sierra Leone hasn't yet recovered from that trauma. We still lie in rubble and lack the optimism of Rwanda. I think I know why. In most parts in Africa, including my country, Sierra Leone, we have not yet quite um, dealt with the massacre that took place in Sierra Leone. Tens of thousands of people that lost their lives. We haven't found a way to commemorate, to reflect. People of Rwanda, I think, you know, have decided to say, let's address this, let's talk about this, let's, let's reflect, let's get people to understand the mistakes that we made. Time has gone where, you know, you want to, to blame somebody else for what you can't do today. 
Let's do it ourselves. But what is it about Rwanda? You know, I come from a country that after the war, I see my country, you know, struggling. I see a few other countries, you know, that are still caught in the past in their civil wars. What is it that you've got so right? Every ship would wish to have a good captain. Our team today, to play well, they need a good captain. They need a good coach. They need somebody who has a vision. This is what we have in Rwanda. We want to leave poverty behind us. We want to leave any kind of conflict behind us. We want to leave disease behind us. We want to prosper, we want to move on. As the captain of this ship, what would you say you need to deliver to the people? What I need to deliver to our people is, first of all, the confidence in themselves. There is no problem that is insurmountable. And our history has proved that. We want for our people prosperity. Why have other people achieved prosperity? I always ask myself, and I always ask my fellow Rwandans. We should be able to address it. And you found a new way, in fact, to deal with it. You created opportunities, and I think that's what Africa needs to understand. Uh, absolutely. Just to give all of these people you see around an opportunity. They express themselves in all kinds of different ways that will give them what they want.